Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on systems of equations. In this video, you will learn about an important algebraic skill, solving systems of two and three equations for each of two or three variables. By the end of this section, you will be able to solve systems of equations such as the following. x plus 4y equals 6. 3x minus y equals negative 8. Uh, and for a, a system in three variables, we add in z. So here we have uh, three equations and three unknowns. 4x plus y plus z equals 9. y minus 6x plus 3z equals 11. z minus y minus x equals 6. In this tutorial, you will learn the methods to use as well as some important manipulation techniques to make even tough looking systems of equations really quite easy. There are a number of methods we use to solve systems of equations in basic algebra. The first is called substitution. This is the most basic method of solving a system it's mostly useful with two variable systems, that is, um, with just x and y. We take one of the equations in the system, solve for either of the variables, then plug the result back into the other equation from the system. The second method is known as elimination. This is where we eliminate one variable to leave us with a simpler, more easily solvable equation. This method can almost always be used, but sometimes it requires the manipulation of the equations by a multiplication factor, and we'll get to this skill in a few moments. The third method of solving a system is by graphing it. Um, any, any simple system can be solved graphically. Finding the point of intersection, x, y, gives you the solution to the system, which is exactly the values of x and y in the ordered pair. Now, we're not going to go over this, but it's an interesting exercise, and I recommend you doing this at least once or twice just to get a feel for the interaction between algebra and geometry. Let's do some examples. Solve the following system. x plus 2y equals 7, 3x minus y equals 0. So here we have two equations, two unknowns. This is what I would call a simple system. An important first step is to make an intelligent choice for your substitution. We would like to make things as easy as possible for us to solve the system. So before we do the solving of, the, of this system, let's look at each possibility for a substitution. So I have listed here four, four choices x equals 7 minus 2y, x equals uh, y divided by 3, y equals 7 minus x divided by 2, and y equals 3x. So each of these is the two equations at the top solved for each of the variables. So x equals 7 minus 2y is the first equation from the system solved for x. Now we want to choose the simplest of these four equations. I think it's quite clear that y equals 3x is the best choice here. It's the simplest and it's going to it's going to um, pose the least difficulty for us going forward. Just for contrast, if we look at the y equals 7 minus x divided by 2, that would be the most difficult and the least intelligent choice for our substitution. So our next step is to take the simplest of those substitutions, which we already determined was y equals 3x and plug it back into the original equation. So that's what I've done here on these four lines. Uh, x plus 2 in brackets 3x, so that represents the substitution I made. Um, and then I just did the algebra down the line. x plus 6x equals 7, 7x equals 7, and of course x equals 1. And finally we take x equals 1 and we substitute it back into either of the original equations to find y. So it doesn't matter which one you put it back into. It's going to be easy either way. Um, I chose to put it back into equation 1. 
So you can see that I put 1 in for x and then did the algebra all the way down. So 1 plus 2y equals 7, 2y equals 6, I'm taking the 1 over and subtracting it from the right side. And divided by 2 on both sides results in y equals 3. So our final answer is the ordered pair x equals 1, y equals 3, or 1, 3. The next method we're going to look at is uh, called solving by elimination. For tougher systems, including those involving three variables, we need to use elimination, also called the method of addition, to solve the system. We must also be able to manipulate equations into a form which allows us to use this method. This involves multiplying one or more of the equations by a constant. This constant could be 2, could be negative 1, could be negative a half. Let's look at an example. Solve the following system. So here we have three equations and three unknowns, x, y, z. So this is a, a much tougher looking system, and indeed it is a little bit tougher than the one we previous looked at, previously looked at. So the first question is where to start. Just like in the last example, the simpler example, we really need to make an intelligent choice. Look at the three equations and see if there are any additions you can make without multiplying by a constant. In the second and third equations, we have y and negative y, so this looks like a good place to start. So we're going to add equation 2 to equation 3, so that the y and negative y cancel out. So when we add y, y plus negative y equals 0, so the y's disappear. So that's our goal. That's the elimination, is having those y's eliminating or disappearing. So you can see I've listed equation 2 and equation 3 on the first two lines of this bullet, um, but I've reorganized the y and x, so they line up. So the y's line up and the x's line up just to make your addition really easy. So you can see y and negative y add to 0, negative 6 and negative x add to negative 7x, and 3z and z add to 4z. And of course on the other side 11 plus 6 equals 17. And on the bottom line here I've just reorganized it to uh, a form in z and x, 4z plus, or 4z minus 7x equals 17. So that's one of our simplified equations. We need another in order to solve for all three variables. When we have three variables, it's basically like we are go we want to go from three variable three unknowns down to two unknowns, and then down to one unknown and down to zero unknown, so we have the full answer. So let's move on. So I've just uh, restated the question at the top there. Okay. So because equation 1 and equation 2 both have just y, we have to multiply one of the equations by negative 1 so that when we add them, the y values go away or disappear or are eliminated. So let's multiply equation 1 by negative 1 and add it to equation 2. That way we'll have negative y and y, which adds to 0. So here on the first line, I've multiplied uh, the, the first equation by negative 1. So every sign has changed. Positives become negatives, negatives become positives. Although in this case, it's all positives, so they become all negatives. Then I've reorganized equation 2 on the second line here, again, just to make the addition easier. So negative 4x plus negative 6x is negative 10x. The y's eliminate, negative y plus y is 0. And negative z plus 3z is 2z. And negative 9 plus 11 is 2. So this is our second equation. And on the second line here, I've just reorganized what we just found. So now this, this new system of two equations and two unknowns looks an awful lot like our first example, which we thought was pretty easy. We could solve these by substitution, but let's do it by elimination instead. So what we've done here 
is multiplied equation two in our newly found equations in x and z by negative two. So we've taken two z minus 10 x equals two and multiplied the whole thing through by negative two so that we could eliminate the equations in z. So you can see in the second line of my final bullet here, I have negative 4z, and in, this, in the top line, I have 4z. So the z's are going to cancel, and that's what we want. So negative uh, 4z plus 20x equals negative 4. We now add that to the top line. And the z's are eliminated. They disappear. And we just get negative 7x plus 20x equals 13x and 17 plus negative 4, or 17 minus 4, equals 13. And we get the lovely equation 13x equals 13, and of course dividing each side by 13, x equals 1. So our last step here is to take this value, x equals 1, and put it back into one of our intermediate equations. Those are the two equations we found on the last slide in uh, x and z. So we had two, we took one of the equations here, 2z minus 10x equals 2, and we're plugging our value x equals 1 back into it in order to find z. So that's what I've done here, uh, doing the algebra down the line, resulting in z equals 6. So now we have two values, x equals 1 and z equals 6. Our final step, of course, is to find y. To do this, we can plug the x and z values back into either of the original equations, the three equations at the top, to find y. In this case, I've picked what I thought was the simplest equation, which is equation 3. Really, it doesn't matter which one you put the uh, x and z values back into, any of them would work. So I've plugged z, uh, 6 in for z and 1 in for x, and that has resulted in, a, in an equation 6 minus y minus 1 equals 6. So that results in a value of y of negative 1 when you complete the algebra. So our final answer is x equals 1, y equals negative 1, z equals 6. Or if you want to write it in a the point form, it's the point 1, negative 1, 6. And that's it for our tutorial on solving systems of equations, and I hope that you tune in for more tutorials. Thank you.